Another good morning to you. Um, this week we're going to have a look at the new 4K turbo range um, from Hike Vision. So we've got the 4K compatible recorders and some 4K cameras to look at. As you can see, if I just take my mouse there, as you can see, fresh haircut, be a game strong from the weekend. So we'll get straight into it. We've got a 4K turret, top left, 4K bullet, top right, 4K dome in the bottom left, and a 2 megapixel PIR bullet, which is a new uh, bullet with a built in PIR. We'll go for that as a separate thing later on. As you can see, we're capturing this straight off the DVR output, so it makes it easy for me to explain to you guys how to work the GUI. Um, traditionally, or before this, before I had the capture, we had to do it via the web browser. And um, now we've got the screen capture device in 4K, we're able to interact with you as if you're in front of the DVR and using the local GUI. Much better. So as you see there, we've got a four-way camera split there. So if I take the mouse and expand one, double click, it goes to the full screen. You can do that with any of them. Say so it is like me being in front of the DVR. And then what we can do then, if we right click, click menu, we get into the menu. What you'll notice, even the turbo is still on GUI 3. Uh, currently there's no plans for the GUI 4 like the i-series recorders. Um, so we are going to be stuck with this menu. Nothing wrong with it, I think it's a brilliant menu. First thing you should do when you get into the menu, go into the maintenance and just check that your actual uh, model number and firmware, so the model number needs to be the HTHI, um, which is the 4K support. K2 is the new series, Turbo 4 series, and 2 means two hard drives available, two SATA ports. And then we've got the firmware version there. It's important that you always keep your firmware up to date. Uh, either go on the Hike Vision European portal or ask us here for devices from us and then we'll send you the latest firmware. We agree to keep those up to date. Uh, like I say, it is important that you do that. Let's go back to the main menu. So, again, um, when we plug our cameras in, the cameras and power them up, the, it'll, the machine will auto sense um, and adjust the resolution as necessary for that camera. So, if it's an 8 megapixel camera, you'll be able to make it an 8 megapixel image. If it's a 2 megapixel camera, it's a 2 megapixel image. And what you'll find, um, these units are POC, power over coax, is a new craze as um, people seem to love. Uh, currently the 4K machines aren't POC, it's something we're working on and hopefully by the end of the year, even if not so sooner than that, we'll have a 4K model with POC. So first thing is power the unit up, we've activated the unit, I haven't set a password in my unit because it's in the demonstration room, so there's actually really no need for a password for me to use the local GUI. Uh, so if I go into the record section, I set my cameras are all set for constant record, blue line, you can set them up for motion, you can split the schedule, you can, you know, it's entirely up to you. So if you wanted uh, outside of operational hours to be motion only, then we can set that time scale there. Apply this. And then from now on, it'll be blue is constant, anything in green is motion. Let's just put this back to constant because I'll forget. And again, you can do that for any one of the cameras that we've got connected there. Next thing, under parameters, you'll see there that the stream type is video and audio. So if you've got a microphone connected to the back of this unit, then uh, stream time video, video and audio need to be selected. Other than that, it's just video. Uh, it's an eight megapixel camera, but we can adjust it down to any of those resolutions. It's an, you know, being 4K, we want to show it in its best resolution. And you'll see that I can set a maximum bit rate of uh, frame rates per second of 12. The 4K currently on this new range is 12 frames a second and 4K. And we're able to set H265 Plus on and adjust the bit rates. If I wanted to, I could turn that off and turn it to H264 Plus. It is backward compatible. Um, let's make use of that um, really good encoding format and leave us H265 Plus. And again, for the event stream, so if you wanted, you could have it as 12 frames a second is constant, and then you can change it to an event stream to be a, uh, a lower stream or a higher stream. So it could be two frames a second continuous record, and on motion or event, it could go up to 12 frames a second. So that's also um, available to you. So then if we go up to the substream, this is where we set our lower stream. Um, so secondary stream, lower stream. So by default, 
it's best to view on an app the uh, substream um, uses less data and it's, it comes through a lot quicker and it'll, most networks will support that if you start viewing 4k cameras remotely via 3, 3g 4g not only will it use a lot of data you might find it struggles to actually bring that image through but again we can set maximum up to wd1 and the frame rate we can put to 25 frames a second or 12 frames a second sorry because it's wd1 but we can reduce these and increase the frame rate if we wanted and then under advanced, we've got it H265 plus and overwrite to, an, so if we click enable, um, by default, it'll just send all of them to H265 plus. The H265 plus is done on the actual machine, not the camera, like it, an IP camera. Um, so I can enable all channels and overwrite is the hard drive. It allows us, by default, that's always ticked. If I untick that, the hard drive would fill up and it would stop recording. The holiday we don't use. Okay, so back to the main menu. So once we're happy that we set our resolutions and recording parameters, we can go into the camera. So we've got the signal input status. We've got the five megapixel long distance transmission there. So we can select the, how many cameras have that. It's increased enhanced distance for coax and cat5 over balance for five and eight megapixel. We can add any IP cameras in. All turbo, camera, all turbo DVRs would allow you a certain amount of IP cameras, depending on the model, will depend on how many and what resolution and frame rate you're supported. Um, rather than go for a model, it's easier to spec uh, check the specification uh, sheet on those. But we are able to add IP cameras directly in there. There's no PoE built into the DVR, so you need to use an external switch. Simple. And then um, the IP camera export. If we happy, once we set a system up, the same with NVRs, we can export all this data to a USB stick. Um, so it saves us having to reconfigure the unit should we have to crash it. OSD on screen menu, say we can give these a name, type down and give it a name. We can actually drag these boxes around to suit our scene. And then apply, and it'll update the time and date where I've just dropped the box. Let's put it back at the top. Again, you can do this uh, DVRs and NVRs. You can set it uh, daemon pure, and you can do it. You can change the time format, daemon pure format, transparent, non-transparent. So you can change the text type and then the size of the font. So if you wanted it a little bit bigger, apply. So I think that's too big personally. There we go. And you can do that for any of the cameras that are connected. Image settings. That allows us to, there's actually a new setting um, on the turbo DVRs, turbo 4 DVRs. We're able to select the camera, we're able to adjust the brightness, contrast, hue, sharpness, denoising, and then it's got some preset ones there. We're also able, we've got time segment one and time segment two, so we can actually set when these time segments are active. So if you've got a specific set of parameters, for a certain time of day, like your trading hours when all the lights are on, and then a, another set when the lights go dim or there's no lighting, we can actually change the segments um, accordingly. So from midnight till uh, four o'clock in the morning would be one set of rules, uh, uh, parameters, and then the same uh, for time segment two. Um, so yeah, we're able to set all those. And then camera parameter settings, we're able to adjust more settings actually on the camera now historically you'd have to go into the camera call in the menu or preset 95 same with uh, an ip cam you'd have to web browse into it we're able to now uh, through the recorders adjust more of the settings makes it more powerful solution copy that so we're able to then uh, for the signal switch we can adjust the resolution and we can adjust some of the day night sensitivities defog night to day sensitivity ir brightness and then we got the wdr switch so you can adjust those accordingly i'm not going to adjust them they're pretty uh, they set up quite well for what i need it for but you are able to adjust all of these settings directly on the local menu uh, ptz so that if you've got a pan tilt zoom connected the, some of these cameras have got motorized zoom lens on there as you can see there in fact more and more cameras are coming with motorized zoom by default it just makes it easy um, but we're able to set presets and if you had a pan tilt and zoom uh, you're able to uh, set presets set patrol set patterns and call them etc and set them all there motion again won't spend too long on this 
but we're allowed to enable motion, apply this, and then adjust the sensitivity accordingly. You have to make sure, when you go in there, you have to make sure the trigger channel is selected, so it's the appropriate camera, when it's active, and then what it does. So audible warning, just hear the unit beep, full screen monitoring, notify surveillance center. Uh, and we'll disable this. Okay, privacy mask. We're able to draw privacy masks. If we needed to apply that. Um, and that would put that image, that would block out uh, if it's looking into um, out into a residential area, you needed to block off windows or uh, somebody else's house that your camera happens to overspill into. That's where you'd set your privacy zones. We'll turn that off. Many examples we can use. Video tampering, video loss, VCA, video quality diagnostics. They're all analytic type events. VCA has been improved uh, one step further on these new 4K models. We've got line cross and intrusion supported on every channel connected to it. Once you enable it, you'll also find there's up to four channels per rule. So line crossing, I can actually have four channels of line crossing. Uh, rule setting, so it's one, two, three, four. You select the rule, select the line. So if you've got a large um, field of view and you've got multiple entrance points that you want to protect, you can actually do up to four lines or four intrusion uh, detection areas in a field of view. We'll turn that off. But a standard VCA, uh, you're probably very familiar with that. And the video quality diagnostics. So you can select blurred image, abnormal brightness, and color cast. Um, if somebody's trying to affect the camera image, you can set an alarm to be triggered on that. We'll come back here. So we've gone through record parameters, we've gone through the camera and the configuration. Very simple, that's where you set all your resolutions, time, dates, enable wizard and password, your DST, your daylight saving uh, settings. You give it your device name in here, auto log out, enable HDMI and VGA simultaneous output. You can turn that on and off and you're selecting your uh, menu uh, which monitor so HDMI or VGA is set to auto currently. All your network settings there with the platform access, your high connect, this one is online. It is quite important to note that enable stream encryption by default is on, untick it and click apply. That will cause problems with the app. If you've ever seen it where you add a unit to the app and you go to live view it, whether it's through IMS 4200 on a PC, you high connect the app for IMS 4500, you'll see it it'll come up with uh, a live view failed encrypted. That's that setting there. If you go into local GUI, turn it off and apply it, then it will um, uh, enable the live view to happen. There are other ways around it. That's the quickest way to resolve it. We've got the alarms. If you've got any alarms connected, this is where you set them up. You've got your live view interface. This is where you set your local GUI live view interface up. So you can have it a four by four split um, and then select it by going into view. You can select whatever cameras you want it displayed on that. You've got your exceptions, so your hard drive full, hard drive error, network disconnected, etc. And then setting up new users. So by default, it's only myself as an admin user in there, but you can set up new users by clicking add the name, password, selecting a level, and then going through then to set the permissions. Uh, maintenance menu, it's more for the engineering. We've got all your system details, your cameras are connected, your core parameters, very powerful menu. Log information if you need to happen to retrospectively go through and see if there's any issues. Import and export the entire device configuration. Again, if we have to default it, it makes it easy to put it back in. Firmware upgrade menu, and then you've got your camera upgrade as well. So if you're upgrading camera specific firmware for Turbo, which is available now, we do it through this menu. You can default the unit. You've got the network detection, so it tells us what ports we're connected to and then what kind of traffic is coming in and out. So we've got not much traffic, to be honest, coming in and out, because it's, it's, nobody's viewing it externally. We're just on it locally. Your hard drive detection tools, your system service. So here, you're, enable, you're able to further enhance the security by enabling and disabling or changing parameters of RTSP authentication type, which is digest and basic. Well, the default is digest. If you're pulling this through a decoder um, or third-party software, or if you put an RTSP stream off, for instance, or a third-party vendor, you need to change this to digest and basic. 
Uh, same with HTTP authentication. And you can disable or change any of these. Now by default, OnViv is turned off. We enable it and then add the OnViv user in. And then IP camera activation. So when I add a camera in or activate it, I can set a different password than the unit has got. By default, when you add an IP, activate it, it takes the activate an IP camera, it takes the uh, NVR or DVR's admin uh, username and password. We can actually change it so it takes a different password rule and makes it a little bit more secure. So it's definitely enhanced security in these products now, and that will grow and continue to grow as we move forward. That's why it's very important to keep your firmware up to date. Your hard drives this is where we've already initialized it and initial initialized it can't even speak we do we support cloud storage and when we say cloud storage it's uh dropbox microsoft onedrive so if we enable cloud you can select onedrive google drive or dropbox but it enables us then to send if we set up a dropbox and we uh set the basically we link through the web browser we can link the Dropbox or one of these accounts to the DVR that sends an authentication code we put that into there then it comes online um, and then we're able to do an event upload to it so we can do record of each camera it's a substream recording uh, so it takes a snapshot on a substream recording based on the pre and post times um, sends it to the cloud uh, Dropbox for instance which then keeps it safe off site and allows you to then retrieve that footage if the worst case scenario happened. It, what you have to remember is it if you've got a lot of footage doing this off a site, you have to allow for that to be uploaded. So if you especially with 4K cameras um, or WD1 because it's substream when it's uploading and you've got 12 cameras doing it, it'll take a bit of time to get to there. So you need to factor that in where if say happen the recorder was stolen for instance, then hopefully all the footage would be there. You need to just make sure that it, the recorder is safely locked away and not really stealable, if that's possible. Uh, and then we're done on that. So if we go back, um, we've got the VCA search menu. So we're able to do, if you've got IP cameras connected, you can do the face search, so um, the face detection. You do the AMPR plate search, people counting and heat map. They all rely on the uh, specific camera to be connected. The VCA search menu is still there. And then you've got export and playback. So if you go into playback, we can select a say four cameras. And from today, it'll play back from today. And it's pretty standard stuff. The interface, again, is not really changed. You'll be very familiar with this. You've got your timeline along the bottom. We drag that timeline to where we need it to be. And this is from when uh, I was in here setting up. We can drag that. If you want to export any of the footage, the best way to do it, or I find the best way to do it, is you've got the scissor clip icon there. So you start clipping, you drag the footage to the end of the event. stop clipping and then when you come out of it will say there's some video footage to save if you want to save this now click yes and then you're able to export that footage directly to a usb stick for the exact time that you've clipped it many other ways of doing this you've got up here normal event tag smart search sub periods external files if you want to play footage back on a usb stick that you save and the smart if you've got uh, VCA event setup. Um, so you, you've got the blue line indicates the uh, constant record and the green is the smart event. So we can click on that and you can see where I'm actually there talking to you. So this is any of the analytical um, or motion events set up. And you can further this by drawing boxes and lines uh, within the field of view and then searching based on that to narrow the search down and make it very quick and easy for you to search. Uh, show, in, show VCA info. If there was a, an analytic event, it would tell you what that was. Uh, again, pretty standard stuff that hasn't really changed. Uh, we'll not save them. And that's about it, really. And uh, that's all I wanted to show you, just the fact that, again, we have got the 4K um, cameras now, uh, DVRs and cameras in stock. It's something that I think will be 
um, proved to be very, very. You can see the video wall is on there. It, it'll prove to be a very good solution. Again, we've got full PTZ control. So if we wanted to zoom this in to the doorway more. And they're auto focus, so it'll find this focus. And we'll bring that back up. That's about it, really, guys. This um, kind of uh, what I wanted to go through. If you've got any questions, please give us a call here at DVS. Um, I hope it was a benefit, really, to show you what 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 is just. Uh, coming available now to you guys again if you need anything please give us a shout and uh, i look forward to working with you on the next video next week uh, have a good day thanks guys bye